Okay, now tell me where we are, what goes on here, and what this represents for the international business. After, in 1975, after we built housing and uh, the health clinic and uh, nutrition programs, social services, a lot of the elderly who came from the rural areas of uh, Japan, China, and the Philippines, they wanted to get back to the earth. They wanted uh, their own gardens. They were living in these uh, single room occupancy units or uh, small apartment uh, units in these high rise buildings. And many of them had these planter boxes on their windowsill. And they really wanted just a little bit more of the, of, uh, uh, of the opportunity uh, to grow more and more and more vegetables. So we worked out a, a lease agreement with the Wu family, Danny and Wilma Wu. Um, and we were able to acquire this piece of property and the adjoining city property to develop this urban, uh, we, what we term the Danny Wu Community Garden, uh, where um, uh, most of the elderly uh, who, who tend the gardens here uh, garden 12 months of the year. Um, tons and tons of produce are out of, out of this uh, urban garden. And the thing was, this really brought, tied the community together. The activists were out running around, demonstrating against the stadium. The business owners, property owners, didn't hold too much, um, didn't, didn't, didn't think the activists were very credible kinds of people until the activists built this garden for, their, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, older people, the parents of the business people. And, uh, there was an acceptance of this new uh, group of activists who were really building something for, for the community. Uh, as I say, this, this started in 1975 and it, it's expanded and it's probably uh, one of the better, we think, urban uh, ag agriculture programs in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Okay, this is uh, the NP Hotel. In room 306 is where uh, me and my father lived after my mother died. And so I grew up in this building. Several, several years later, uh, the agency that I, uh, I direct, Interim, bought the building. And our offices are on the ground floor. So when you really look at it, I haven't gone very far in this world. From the third floor to the, to the ground floor. Okay. Okay. Back in the early 40s, uh, I lived with my dad in this building, the NP Hotel. It's one of the very uh, exclusive hotels in the International District in the early 20s and 30s. Uh, um, uh, but I grew up here in room 306. Several years later, oh, maybe a couple decades later, uh, the agency that I direct, Interim, we bought the building and renovated it. So when you look at it, I really haven't gone very far in this world from the third floor to the street front. We go in here? During the early war years, uh, in, the, in the early 40s, uh, I grew up in this building uh, with my dad. Sammy Santos. We lived in room 306. Several decades later, of course, interim, my agency. And one more time here. Sorry. That's good. Let's get that fancy footwork, baby. Okay. Here we go. In the Warriors in the early 40s, uh, I grew up in this building with my father, Sammy Santos. We lived in room 306. <coughs> Several decades later, we bought the building. Intra, my agency, bought the building. So, <coughs> I haven't gone very far in this world. <coughs> <coughs> in the early 40s, during the, the war years, I grew up in this building, the NP Hotel, which is in the, uh, in, in the early days, the 1920s and 1930s. This was the exclusive hotel in the International District. 
and uh, I lived in, uh, in room 306 in the NP Hotel. And several decades later, my agency, Interim, purchased the building and renovated it. And my office now is in the ground floor of the uh, NP Hotel. So I haven't gone very far in this world, moving from the third floor to the street front. Now they're taking camera. It says, <laughs> spoon a taste of paradise. Sprinkle sugar or sweetener. Yeah. Open up. Boy, if you get mad at somebody, yeah, you just put that on. Yeah, you put that yeah. on. You put that yeah. on their seat, and when they sit down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we're gonna look at this uh, this root that's on sale. Hi. On sale today. Today, 99 cents a pound. You save a dollar a pound. This is for your soup. Oh boy, I'm gonna buy some. Yeah, need to buy some of that. That's good. Good for you. Okay. Good for your system. Yeah, yeah. Make your body get all get strong. Yeah. That's very good in soup. Yeah. You put the meat and chicken in the soup too. Yeah. Inside, yeah. Yeah. How come it's on sale so cheap? Uh, once a while, not, once in a while? Not, not every day. Yeah, yeah. not every day. Sometimes yeah. uh, China. China. Oh, in China, and they they import it in here. Yeah, huh? From South China, yeah. Okay, mainland. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Go on the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just like a this one root. Oh, it's so pop good. up to you, and you tell me what it is again. I'm gonna go like when you see the camera looking yeah. at you. Well, this is a uh, lotus root. Lotus root. Wait, wait till you see the camera. Okay. Ready? This is actually lotus root. Yeah. And uh, it's it's imported from China. From China, yeah. And it's on sale. That's on sale. Yeah, this, this is this special. week. Yeah. Nor uh, regular, it's a dollar ninety nine a pound. This week, ninety nine a pound. And it's good for soup. You for slice soup, it up. Yeah, just slice it up. Yeah. Yeah, and you put a little chicken in the in the broth, yeah. and then and you put this in the broth, and it gives you a good well, flavor. Huh? Healthy. Very yeah. healthy too. Yeah, you're healthy too. Yeah. 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 Hi. How are you? Okay, Bob. Hey, Mark. What's good today? What do we got? This is a specialty se section. It says ring bell, bell for service. Hola. So what, what do you got, Mark? What's good? Lamb. Lamb? What's this one here? Pork? What do you do with that? You fry it. That's marinated. It's already marinated. You just what, fry it up. What's in the marinade? It's, uh, yeah, I'm not going to show. Oh, it's sweet, huh? Yeah, it's uh, pineapple. Uh, we got brown sugar, soy sauce, spices, and all that. Oh, it looks pretty it's good. A, it's a Filipino dish. Oh, yeah, I should know that. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, yeah. uh, marinated, huh? Marinated Korean sauce. barbecue sauce. Yeah. Blank steak. Blank steak skewers. So you do all the marinating here overnight? Uh, you do it overnight, yeah. Oh, good. So, um, put it in back into the counter every morning. Well, you know me. This is where I do my shopping. Oh, yeah. And slide it inside of it. Sure. Actually, if you just slide it, if, if you're right, poke in right there. Still oh. talking. Oh. You want, you want, you want you right there. Come on in. Come, Come on, on in. There you go. Right there. Right you right got to tell me what's going on. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Pork tenderloin and ginger sauce. Yes. That ought to be pretty good. Okay. Get on the grill. <laughs> Put that on the grill, huh? Put it on the Spice grill. Spice it up. Or, yeah, or you yeah. can um, bake it. No, or bake it. Okay. Real good. You got the teriyaki chicken wings. Yeah. Drumsticks. Wow. Marinated boneless uh, chicken thighs. That looks pretty good. Looks good. Good point at the point at the pork tenderloin. Oh, where in the hell is the pork tenderloin? Right. Just got there. <laughs> My hand was in there when you did it. So yeah, take your hand out and point at him and ask him about it. 
Okay, the pork, the ginger, uh, pork tenderloin and ginger, ginger yeah. sauce. How long has that been marinating? Uh, Probably overnight? Two days. Two days. Yeah. Oh my God, no wonder. I only do it a couple hours. No, two days, you, you, you gotta be serious about cooking. Sushi heaven. Look at that, any kind you want. So this is the important section. Oh, this is it right here. This is food haven heaven. You can get order dishes from Thailand, Philippines, China, Japan. There's roast duck. Roast pork, roast duck. You get two entrees for the price of one, right there. Go with Saigon Bistro. Okay, Inai's chicken, Filipino dishes. Here's my love. I will. So, uh, is your stomach starting to growl? Every, every, every uh, dish from, from every country in this little section of the food court. Amazing. I don't know. I'm just doing what I'm told. How are you doing? How's it going? Excellent. You still? I am still working. I'm still working. Okay. I'm looking for the ice cream section. I know. Okay. I'm looking. You want me to look on that side? Well, I should walk by me. You're looking in that direction. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking for the ice cream section here. Okay. You know what, I'm really looking for the ice cream section or the dessert section. Some of the buildings that we have in the in the core of the international district are, as you can see, we have uh, thriving businesses on the storefront, but then second floor and above are vacant. And these are the buildings that my agency, Interim, we're trying to work with the owners to see if we can get the owners to reinvest in their property and their buildings and revitalize, you know, the, this area of, of the international district. Uh, many of these buildings are pretty old. The ownership could be several hundred people now. Um, and so sometimes it's pretty tough to get a consensus on what to do with the building or the future of the building. But we're still working it. My agency, uh, we're, uh, we're uh, geared to um, help them put packages together. 
loan uh, packages, um, uh, a development schemes, uh, uh, architectural drawings, uh, all those type of technical kinds of things for the owner. So we're still working it. What would you like to see? Point more housing. We, we'd like to see more housing here. We want a 24-hour community and the more people that we have uh, in the buildings, on the street, it's better for everybody. They pay, they pay their rent, uh, the owners pay off their mortgages, uh, the businesses are thriving. And this would, that's what it really takes to keep the International District flowing. And again, yes. During the turn of last century, um, Asians couldn't own property. So these investment companies were started with two or three members of the families. And uh, those families have grown, of course, you know, in the last five, six decades. And so the membership, where there used to be only maybe three or four members of, of, a, of, a, of a company, and they've grown, their families have grown. Now the ownership of the buildings uh, a number in uh, two, three, four hundred people. So it's hard to get a consensus on what to do with the future of their buildings. Why'd you come from around the corner? Hey, Cuba. Back a little further. Further on sea shoulder. All right, action. <laughs> action. Am I walking uh, the right way? This Sun May. Very good store. Been here for years and years and years. We are actually passing the Milwaukee Hotel. This building's up for sale. I think they want a little bit too much for it, but it's a good building to renovate. My agency had it in 1978. We managed it for a couple of years, uh, but the owner uh, decided there. he didn't want to sell it at that time. This is the Gung Fu place. The sign says open. You can get your shoes there. Okay, see you guys. Some of the stores are closed, but restaurants are open. Of course, it's lunchtime in the International District. Fortune City, good seafood. The herb store. Don't look at the cameras, walk right on by it. I'm gonna walk right on by. Walk on by. I'm just getting run over by a car. Okay, two, okay. How are we this is a Hollywood thing. So you go all the way out. Is this the food challenge? You got pictures in the other way. Hey, big hat. Okay. Hey, big hat. Hey, Milton. Hey, Milton. How's it going on? How's, it, how's business? How's the business? Slow, a little bit. Slow? It's a little bit. How come? Rain. It must be the, it must be the weather. There you go. Thank Better you. All combination. Okay. Where's the, where's where's uh, Harry? He must be in China now. Huh? I don't know where he is. He never tells us. Never done. He didn't report to you. 
No, no, he's, he's around. He's around. Oh, sorry. that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. So what's good today? What's uh, special? Well, it's the last we'll get. Take 15. One, two, three, four, five. Here he comes. Jaja Ming. Hey, Milton. How you doing? How are you going? He's my man. How are you doing? How's business? Pretty good? A little bit slow. What's the special today? Special? Smells. Fresh smell? Smelt. Oh, fresh smell? Good with oh, good. Oh, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Black bean sauce. Black bean sauce. Uh, yeah. My favorite. Yeah. Yeah. So what else is happening? Yeah. We got the yeah. ring here. I hear, you know? I hear Harry's in China. Huh? Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Last <laughs> time I heard it was in uh, Korea. Now. Oh, is that right? It's the only way he's back. Okay, he's not king or are we just sort of opening our mouths? Yeah, keep talking. Keep As talking. if you just walked in. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. uh, another special. Special? Steamed salmon. Okay. Oh, steamed salmon. Bean sauce. What about Shanghai greens Shanghai green. with beans? That sounds food. pretty good. Okay. Tofu. Tofu. Yeah. Tofu mixed vegetable. Pork chop with pepper sauce, salt, salt yeah. pepper. That's, yeah, that's a, okay. deep fried. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like you're greeting them again, but on this side of the camera. Oh, you said that side. Oh, I said the other one. Get up, down, and up. Get up and back up there. And then, and then what again? Sit down <laughs> again. And, okay. Stand by. Okay. And go for it. Uh, Milton, how yes. you doing, man? Good. How's, how's business? This is okay. Oh, good. What's special today? What do you special. got? Looks good. So, steamed salmon. Steamed salmon. Steamed black cod. With black oh, beans. yeah. Deep fries, fresh smell. Okay. Snap peas with beans. Deep ocean with smell, beans. not the Columbia. This is better. Oh, this is ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Ocean, not the Columbia rivers. Okay. Hi. That's the stir fry right here. Excellent. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, May first. Uh, May first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, May first. May first. Uh, May first. Uh, May first. Uh, Thursday, right? Thursday. Yeah. May first is Thursday. Wow. Next Thursday. Yeah. A week from Thursday. Crispy yeah. Hong Kong style. Yeah. Cable. Yeah. Yeah. The ingredients: vegetables, Shanghai green, barbecue yeah. pork, yeah. squid, and shrimp. Still have ten fingers. We'll cover up for a few minutes. Oh, look at that charcoal. Make sure the bit was done. They, they even it out. What? Put the noodle on the bottom. A couple times a year. And the ingredients on top. We better move out of the so way. The cooking, time, the, the cooking time is about probably about five to uh, this is seven. They have a little. Now, this gentleman is down below. And every, every Thanksgiving oh, season, the Saturday after Thanksgiving is when I bring my whole family and we all, we're, we're all downstairs. Instead of cooking big turkey dinners, we, we come out. That's been a tradition. This is one of those restaurants I used to come to when I was. Very, very, very young. Look at the other dishes, almost ready. I remember coming here. It's ready, Yeah. I hope so. A chef special to me. Hong Kong style. Oh yeah, yeah. The son, the, uh, the son uh, are the original, uh, are the owner. Uh, yeah. They did good. 
These guys are uh, superstars now. Yeah. He still has all his fingers. You ready? Okay. You ready? <laughs> well, first, I'd just like to, you're a newcomer. You said you've only been here uh, within the last few years. What were your impressions? You've seen other international districts around the country. What did you think of Seattle's? Well, I grew up in Portland, and Portland's definitely a smaller Chinatown community. It's definitely not such a internationally district, um, you know, not really a real mix of Asian groups other than Chinese. So when I first came to the National District, I actually didn't know where it was because I said, well, I know where Chinatown is, but I don't know where International District is. And it was only after I really spent some time here that I realized um, it was pretty incredible how many different ethnic groups had sort of come, built some businesses here. And after working in this area for the past five years, it was really amazing to me how many activists of today had started back in the 1970s and maybe even earlier but to me that's what stands out with Seattle's community is a lot of people are born and raised here and continue to live here you, you know through their professional life and retirement whereas Portland to me was more a newer population they had probably set up um, their community there couple decades or so after Seattle had established their community. So to me, um, one of the first things I noticed was a lot of these elderly Japanese American women would be speaking perfect English. And I remember being so bothered with, you know, how my parents being just moved here in the 1970s that someone who was so much older had really been here for two or three generations. And that was pretty obvious the first time I moved here. So, um, as we were talking earlier, you're very familiar with Bob Santos and recognize him as a figure in the community. Yeah. And you understand what his, his party line is. Where, where do you differ from Bob in terms of your perceptions and thinking about the district? Well, Uncle Bob is just an incredible figure in this community. He was really here from the very beginning of um, all the action with the kingdom and um, being involved with the housing development issues. And me being sort of uh, not only a newcomer to Seattle, but a Vietnamese immigrant, I, I feel that his issues are directly related to his experiences working here for 30 years, whereas uh, myself and also the Vietnamese American community and also the Korean American community, we really just settled here in the 19, late 1970s, established Little Saigon in the 1980s, and I think our issues are very different than the ones of the settled community, the Chinese, Japanese, and Filipinos, because we're still trying to, for one, start businesses and just get settled and establish ourselves. And secondly, we're still trying to educate our communities on some of the issues that are affecting um, specific communities like Vietnamese and Korean communities but also the Asian American community. So I see my focus is a lot more on maybe something that Uncle Bob was doing back in the 70s which is just just starting to mobilize people and gather people to start talking about these issues. And how important is family which seems to be um, uh, certainly evident in a lot of the businesses here and, and the roots of the International District were all family mm -hmm. owned enterprises and that sort of thing. Is that still prevalent certainly in the Little Saigon community? Mm -hmm. Is that, or are those times changing? I think definitely family is very important in the Little Saigon area, but I think because there's already an established Asian American community, the children of these parents who founded businesses here it's so easy for, I mean, it's a lot quicker for their children to get immersed in the culture, American culture, and to get educated. There's so many opportunities that you probably don't see, you definitely see a lot of mom and pop shops, but their children are most likely not helping out as much as, say, you know, 20 years ago. I mean, I think their hope is to run their businesses so their children can get better professions. 
So I think definitely family is really important, but that generation passing on of businesses through generations isn't being passed on. And so the danger is in 10, 20 years, when the parents are too old to run their stores, what's gonna happen to little Saigon when their children aren't the business owners anymore? They're off being um, other type of professions. The, um, what do you see as you look down the road five or 10 years from now or the sort of changes or diversification that you feel need to happen? Well, I think uh, because the Chinese population, the Filipino and Japanese Americans are so established here, I think they definitely have a strong interest in preserving this area as it is, or maybe as it was, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. But of course, when you get Little Saigon developing as much as it is um, since the 1980s, I'd like to see just other populations that are trying to get their foothold in this area more support, maybe uh, looking at language, uh, business development that's going to target those communities that aren't, don't have the financial resources of, of having been here for generations. In that respect, I think International District really needs to become an international um, communities, newer communities that have just settled here within the past they'll bring in their families and um, others from their country. As people move into the area, um, is this a place where people would aspire to or do you think this is a place for new immigrants who just get established and then move on somewhere else? Mm -hmm. I think this is a place to get established, although more and more it seems like even now this area might be too expensive and perhaps now they're starting out in White Center, a lot lower income neighborhoods, but I think this is still an entry point. But I think the hope is that they'll move out and establish businesses in the suburbs or the east side. Because if you look at the trend in um, housing, a lot of Asian Americans are moving um, out of Seattle and Bellevue, and especially the Vietnamese community is moving towards Renton a lot more. I think the ideal is to be in those neighborhoods that are perhaps um, not so urban and a lot safer for their families and um, possibly closer to where they live, which is now in the Renton area. And do you have an example of a business or an enterprise here that really is uh, a success story in your own mind, something that you yeah, I would definitely say um, Tom, Tom Nguyen, he owns the Saigon Bistro up on uh, 12th and Jackson. And he started off, uh, came here in the 1980s, established a small restaurant that has since changed over um, owners. But he opened uh, Saigon Bistro, pretty very successful business, but then also opened up a stall in the Uwajimaya Village. And now is also in the new stadium, football, football stadium. And I mean, he's a success story not just because of the businesses he's been able to establish, but he's also really been giving back to the community. He'll give a lot of um, donations, um, food financially, uh, a lot of support to um, people like me who are sort of the newer generation of Vietnamese Americans. Whereas I think others of his age are still kind of fixed in their ideals and they don't really welcome emerging leaders and I feel like he's a success story because of that because of his outreach with me and other young leaders and his um, support of what we're doing and trying to help us achieve what we want to achieve with our community and our personal goals. Is there anything that you want to say that you think is critical you know sort of knowing the slant of what we're doing or? Uh -huh. Well you know, I've really grown to love this community. It's, um, it's very fascinating to me. It's very different than any community I've ever lived in. I've lived in different places across the country. Uh, but one thing I do hope is, it, it's been kind of a struggle trying to get involved with the community because, because it's been around so long that you've got these activists who are 
definitely just so entrenched in what they do and have been doing it for years that I just hope that it opens up a little bit more to people who maybe didn't grow up in Seattle, who didn't, say, attend the University of Washington, or who maybe, um, you know, newer immigrants. But I think um, that needs to happen in order to go further with, I think, we all share the same goal in the end of improving this area and keeping it um, close and unified. And is there, as you were talking, I was just thinking in terms of Bob, you know, truly being an elder, is there that kind of tension that in an Asian community that sort of those voices need to be respected or do you feel that a younger voice is as valid and, you know, the, the older generation just needs to hear what? I think there is a tension although I don't think it's, I think it's more subtle. I don't think, uh, I don't think Uncle Bob necessarily might say, might agree that there is a tension, but I think, um, I think it's a struggle to get uh, our, vo our voices heard being not part of that, the 70s movement uh, in Seattle. I think it's, I think people of his generation, activists, kind of uh, assume that people care about the issues they're working on and in the end it's still a lot of education even for me and for the newcomers too that we didn't grow up with that same experience and part of my mission um, working at the International Examiner is to get people who aren't already interested interested in what some of the issues are and so I think there's an assumption that we all care about the same thing. Well, first of all, that we actually care. And I don't think we should assume that. I think part of our mission right now is to get more people to care about what we're working on. Okay. Do, you, um, do you think the city's been good to the International District? I mean, do you have <laughs> enough of a history to, to... Well, I actually did some fundraising at uh, the museum down here. And I feel like, I think, there's been enough activism on the part of the International District um, agencies and businesses that we've definitely made our needs heard by the city. And I, I would say overall the city has been respectful of some of the things that we need, you know, just financially and, and resources. But I, I do think if you look at some of the development and uh, improvements in the past few years that I've been in the ID, it hasn't, I haven't really seen that much. So I, mean, I think there's definitely projects that they've invested their time and energy with, but I, it seems like a constant struggle for the city to remember that we still have a lot of things we have to work on in this district and that it's still important even though we have new offices like the Paul Allen buildings that, you know, we're still struggling as a community economically and just physically. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. Where is this restaurant close by that you mentioned? Yeah, there's a... It's you ready, Matt? Do you? Back home? Yeah, come to yeah. Um, How's business? Uh, that need to be slow. Yeah. But we are okay. Been slow? Yeah. I um, went to Ujima. Oh, okay today. But yesterday, I did one yesterday. So, mm. slow. Why do you think it's been slow? I don't know. There are so many factors. Yeah. yeah. I think that uh, maybe uh, SARS <laughs> failed. Yeah, I heard that. People seem to be worried about coming to International yes. District. Yeah. That surprises me. Surprising. Do you know anybody who's been back to Vietnam recently? Uh, yeah, I know one or two of them. Are they pretty worried too? Yeah. yeah. But I think that is uh, now since that uh, 
I think the condition is uh, becoming a little bit better now. Mm -hmm. So quite, uh, yeah, quite, yeah, a little bit less scary now. Yeah. How about your new business in um, the football stadium? Yeah, we do, do, is it, it doing it, okay? Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've been pretty busy at the mm -hmm. paper. And we're having a dinner next month. Well, the dinner is kind of slow. It's too slow. Oh, yeah. But um, the examiner is having a... They'll talk, they'll talk to the town. 